This is Mike Lemieux from the International Chamber of Commerce's Basscat program, and you're listening to IP Fridays. Hello, and welcome to this episode of IP Fridays. Our names are Ken Suzanne and Rolf Clayson, and this is the podcast dedicated to intellectual property. It does not matter where you are from, in-house or private practice, novice or expert. We will help you stay up to date with current topics in the fields of trademarks, patents, design and copyright, discover useful tools, and much more. Welcome to episode 112 of IP Fridays. I'm Rolf Klesen and I'm co-host of IP Fridays together with Ken Suzanne. And today's interview guest is Mike Lemieux of the International Chambers of Commerce and the Best Camp program talking about piracy and anti-counterfeiting. But before we jump into the interview, I want to say sorry for the long pause in IP Fridays. This has been due to private reasons on my side, but we hope that we can resume our monthly podcast from now on. Before we jump into the interview, I want to share some news with you. The second part of the Trademark Law Modernization Act in Germany has entered into force on 1st of May 2020, making it now possible for invalidity and revocation proceedings before the a German Patent and Trademark Office. That means if you want to get a trademark revoked, either based on non-use or on earlier rights, you don't have to go to a civil court anymore. You can do that, but as an alternative, you can now start invalidity or revocation proceedings before the German Patent and Trademark Office. I am assuming that these proceedings will be less expensive than the civil court proceedings, but this is not clear yet. For example, it largely also depends on the time that the attorneys have to spend in these proceedings. But the general hope is that these proceedings will be much less expensive than the civil court proceedings. On the other hand, I uh, safely assume that these proceedings at the German Patent and Trademark Office will not be as time efficient as the civil court proceedings, where the civil court proceedings usually render their first instance decision within a year approximately. I assume that the proceedings at the German Patent and Trademark Office will take a little bit longer for the first instance, although, of course, there is no experience yet with the new proceedings. Also, just a quick reminder, the PCT fees will change starting from the 1st of July 2020, so make sure that you take note of the new PCT fees if you are a patent person. Also, just a quick reminder regarding Brexit. The transitional period will end on 31st of December 2020 and it much looks like that there will be no deal. So the transitional period will not be extended. In short, that means that all registered EU designs and EU trademarks that are registered before 31st of December 2020 will become national trademarks and designs in the UK automatically and without cost. For pending applications for trademarks and designs, you will be able to file a national application for a UK trademark or UK design. And if you do that within the first nine months after the 1st of January 2021, you can retain the earlier filing date of the pending EU design or EU trademark. Now let's jump into the interview with Mike Lemieux talking about piracy and anti-counterfeiting. Our guest today on IP Fridays is Michael Lemieux. Michael is an independent consultant to the International Chamber of Commerce's Business Action to Stop Counterfeiting and Piracy, or ICC BASCAP. You may recall that Michael was a guest on episode 98 of IP Fridays, where we covered trade secret theft. Michael retired from the FBI as a supervisory special agent at the National Intellectual Property Rights Coordination Center, 
where he managed FBI investigations involving theft of trade secrets, counterfeit goods, and copyright and trademark infringement. Since his retirement from government, Michael's private sector work includes serving as an industry consultant on IP and security topics, as a consultant for an industry-leading online brand protection provider, and he continues to serve as a law enforcement fellow with Michigan State University Center for Anti-Counterfeiting and Product Protection. Welcome back, Michael, to IP Fridays. Thank you, Ken. It's great to be here. Michael, can you explain to our audience about the work of the International Chamber of Commerce's Business Action to Stop Counterfeiting and Piracy? Sure. The, the Business Action to Stop Counterfeiting, Counterfeiting and Piracy Program, or BASCAP for short, is a 14-year-old initiative uh, from the International Chamber of Commerce that brings together leading participants from the private sector all of them with extensive experience in fighting counterfeit, counterfeiting and piracy. Um, it's really important to note, though, that ICC is an institutional representative of more than 45 million companies in over 100 countries, uh, really representing companies covering all areas of industry. Uh, the BASCAP program has a unique and established track record of dealing with almost all areas of counterfeiting and piracy. Now, the BASCAP program unites global business, uh, the global business community to effectively identify and address intellectual property rights issues. Uh, BASCAP's guiding principle is to use their resources to achieve concrete and demonstrable results, whether by developing tools to assist the anti-counterfeiting and anti-piracy community or spurring targeted government action through high-level advocacy, or by changing public perception uh, through delivery of key messages. Um, to do this, the BASCAP work plan really focuses in on kind of five key principal areas that, that we concentrate. Uh, the first is to promote more effective public policy, uh, legislation, and industry best practices. Uh, the second is pressing uh, both regional and national governments to strengthen IP enforcement. Uh, the third principle is to leverage international governmental organizations, for instance, like the European Union or the United Nations. Uh, the fourth uh, key principle is to publish leading reports to help shape government agendas and priorities. And the final principle that we work on or work off of is to build global public awareness and that's a very important part of this campaign. Um, the organization BASCAP is open to all companies and organizations really large and small. We have a very wide variety of participants participants in this program. Um, uh, all of these organizations are committed to the fight against counterfeiting and piracy. Um, members are invited to provide in-kind support by contributing to the drafting of materials, um, participating on implementation teams. Uh, they sometimes host stakeholder events. Uh, they oftentimes lead working group initiatives. And in some cases, they contribute financial support to the overall efforts of the program. Uh, the priorities for BASCAP in 2020 include uh, a focus on, on free trade zones, uh, the e-commerce e landscape, uh, landlords, uh, supply chain vulnerabilities, and the small parcel or small package environment. Um, additionally, BASCAP also has a, a very significant regional work stream across a number of regions throughout the world, including the United States, uh, India, South America, and Africa. Um, as a cross-sectoral business organization, the ICC is really well-placed to deliver a long-term and multi-stakeholder response to ensure more security across the entire supply chain. So effectively, that's uh, in a very nu quick nutshell, that's what BASCAP does. Yeah, Mike, you mentioned that uh, BASCAP does work with respect to landlords. What exactly do they do? That sounds interesting. 
Well, when we talk about the work that BassCap does generally, especially when we're talking about e-commerce intermediaries, um, landlords would be a part of it as any other intermediary. For instance, uh, e-commerce platforms would be an e-commerce intermediary. And so those landlords that, that have brick-and-mortar locations that offer products for sale by the different sellers uh, is is treated really the same as an e-commerce intermediary. So they are also a very important part of e-commerce. Mm -hmm. Now, Mike, I know you have intellectual property rights enforcement experience in both government and industry. Uh, your role as an independent consultant with ICC BASCAP seems to be an interesting outlet for someone with your background. Could you tell us uh, why you were drawn to the ICC and their BASCAP program? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that, Ken, because it, it really is an important reason why I wanted to support the BASCAP program. Uh, when I was in government, especially during 2015 and 2016, I was very fortunate to work on an initiative that was launched by then U.S. Attorney General uh, Lynch um, to, to work a, a joint initiative that combined the efforts of industry and government together to help combat illicit activity in the e-commerce environment. Uh, very specifically, it was also working with some of the e-commerce intermediaries. And, and through that work, I really began to appreciate how important it was to be able to have all of these uh, multifaceted relationships with not only industry, government, uh, some of the legislative bodies, um, all of the, the industry coalitions, for example, and because of that, I was always very attracted to, to solutions that really brought together all of those different stakeholders um, that have some influence in the e-commerce e environment, um, rights holders, uh, intermediaries, and the industry coalitions, and, of course, the government entities as well, of which at that time I was one of them in law enforcement. I think that was really unique because um, because I think with a program like BASCAP, uh, it allows both some short-term solutions, the enforcement part of the equation, but it also offers some potential for long-term solutions, which might be more in line with policy or other other types of uh, enforcement actions um, in terms of some of the uh, the legal guidelines that we might use to to operate in the e-commerce environment. So. Because of that, and because of my experience in government, this was really a chance to be able to return to doing some of that important work and really have more tools to actually work on it now than I did back then. Interesting. Now, I also noticed that ICC BASCAP supports industry working groups uh, that address several of the most challenging topics within intellectual property. Can you explain for us the, the efforts of some of these working groups and their importance to the rights holders' efforts to protect their brands in e-commerce? Uh, sure, and I mentioned our focus on the priority topics for 2020 that included working on free trade zones and e-commerce intermediaries, landlords, supply chain vulnerabilities, and the, the small parcel environment. Mm -hmm. um, the BASCAP uses a, a member-led model um, to support industry working groups that really address these important topics. We have working groups that are focused on the United States market, um, e-commerce intermediaries, landlords, and several other specialized trade topics. Uh, the consultants that work with BASCAP really facilitate the efforts of the industry members within each one of these working groups. Um, while all of them have kind of a slightly different initiative um, and a different workflow, the efforts of these working groups are all aimed really squarely at protecting brands in e-commerce uh, the, BASCAP, the BASCAP working groups are, are really engaged in developing and promoting best practices of e-commerce intermediaries, strategic outreach with other e-commerce partners, and organize efforts to really strengthen IP protection by influencing public policy and legislation. Uh, these important working groups also contribute substantially to the International Chamber of Commerce's overall effort to build public awareness regarding the dangers of counterfeiting and piracy. 
Mike, you've come from a background of law enforcement uh, for many years, and we've heard that it is important for the private sector to exchange information with law enforcement. What is the ICC BASCAP approach to this topic, and do you support any efforts involving information exchange? Well, that information exchange is, is really a great topic to, to work on and to discuss. Um, we work in a, a very rapidly expanding e-commerce ecosystem with rights holders, intermediaries, and in some cases the government entities have more data at their fingertips now than ever before. Uh, for example, the expansion of online brand protection operations among industry really has resulted in more brand owners possessing really substantial IP risk data, perhaps not only just on their own products, but also on, on some other products as well. Um, in many cases now, it's, it's really not a matter of whether we have the information at hand. It's what do we do with it to achieve the most effective outcomes. Uh, the importance of this information, ex information exchange topic was really highlighted in the most recent Department of Homeland Security report from January 2020. Uh, for example, in the spirit of Know Your Customer, KYC, the report recommends that U.S. Customs, Customs and Border Protection uh, provide data related on past seizures of counterfeits so that delivery companies and e-commerce intermediaries, for example, can avoid inadvertently working with known counterfeiters uh, the more fulsome identification of those involved in the shipment of illicit uh, products is really a lofty goal, mm -hmm. but it's one that BASCAP would encourage as a positive, positive step forwards, uh, reducing the flow of counterfeit uh, shipments in e-commerce. Um, perhaps the, the most important element in information exchange is, frankly, it's the relationship between the parties on which the exchange is built upon, um, in that way, the important work of the BASCAP working groups really forms a critical basis for further information exchange, not only between industry partners, but also between industry and government. Uh, the BASCAP program really works tirelessly to identify additional sources of information, whether it be government or industry-based, and then endeavors the exchange of that information to pertinent stakeholders where there might have there might be the greatest impact and and a good example is the information that a rights holder may have uh, that is a key to their own IP risk um, might be something that border enforcement uh, can use as an actionable item um, or for instance that industry access to available government data sets that will help in the brand's own IP threat mitigation um, and so really the sharing information ideally would go both directions, which would be industry to government and then hopefully government to industry. It's quite a challenge, but it's certainly something that we would like to strive for. Um, in total, the BASCAP encourages open exchanges of data and fully supports cooperation between rights owners, government organizations, including law enforcement, and of course e-commerce intermediaries. Let's um, switch gears and also talk about relationships, which I know are central to the operation of um, ICC BASCAP. I've seen that there's a new relationship between the International Chamber of Commerce and the World Health Organization, an organization we've been hearing a lot about these days. Can you tell our audience a little about this strategic relationship? Uh, absolutely. In, in mid-March of this year, of 2020, uh, the International Chamber of Commerce and the World Health Organization announced a, a really unprecedented collaboration in calling businesses to action to fight against the COVID-19 virus. Um, their agreement leverages the ICC's global network of, as I mentioned, over 45 million businesses to enable companies worldwide to play an active role um, in preventing the spread of the COVID-19 virus. It, it calls for ICC and the World Health Organization to regularly facilitate information flows by disseminating the latest and most reliable information on the virus outbreak to businesses. And it also calls for national governments to adopt a whole-of-government and really a whole-of-society approach 
by making all necessary resources available um, in responding to the uh, COVID-19 pandemic. Mm -hmm. And Mike, what are some of the things that the ICC and BASCAP uh, has recommended that businesses do during this COVID-19 crisis? Well, um, ICC and BASCAP really has, has called for governments to ensure open trade and for the need to expedite movement of essential goods across borders uh, by keeping global su supply chains fast moving with open trade lines and removal of, of the unnecessary trade barriers um, in some of the key supply chains. The, the ICC also advocates for governments to reverse and ban all tariffs, quotas, and other non-tariff measures that affect the deployment of medical equipment, for instance, medicines, mm -hmm. and other essential goods and services, to, in, to including food supplies. Um, however, uh, the ICC and BASCAP also recognize that given the cross-border nature of supply chains, these recommendations and safeguard measures should be taken in a very coordinated manner at both the national and international levels to ensure that any opportunity for inf infiltration of the supply chain by either substandard or fake goods is also removed. Um, additionally, while engaging in open trade flows, the, the ICC would also like businesses to be aware that open trade increases vulnerability to a wide range of abuses by, by criminal elements uh, who will often take advantage of relaxed oversight, um, softened customs controls, and the lack of transparency. Um, the relaxation of regulations and oversight of regular customs operations is very attractive to criminal networks, and those involved in the manufacture, packaging, and distribution of counterfeit parts and goods are, are very often attracted to that, that uh, change in, in processes. You know, therefore, um, ICC and BASCAP really recommends that businesses um, execute due diligence in recognizing and knowing the risks when they're within their industry. Um, control over their supply chains is very important. The less control a company has over their network of suppliers and distributors, the more opportunity exists for counterfeit products and parts to enter a supply chain. Thank you, Mike. Uh, just a few more questions before we wrap up for today. Uh, from your perspective in law enforcement and investigations, what do you think are the most pressing issues for businesses in the area of counterfeiting and piracy? Well, I, I think for me going forward, I, I think one of the very important parts as we move forward, and, and granted, the landscape is changing all of the time, and the COVID-19 uh, pandemic response has really complicated those efforts already. But I think one of the real themes that we're going to look for going forward is the availability of data and what we do with it. Uh, that data can be very valuable in terms of enforcement on the government side, uh, customs interdiction. It also can be very important for, for industry, whether it's an e-commerce intermediary or a, a rights owner to be able to take action on that. But this is something that, you know, 20 years ago, Ken, I don't think we really had. We did not have that much data available. And with the technology available now and some of the processes, I think this is going to be a, a very important theme as we move forward in e-commerce. Mm -hmm. Speaking of data, is there a website for ICC BASCAP? Because I know many of our listeners might want to read up and do some more research on their own. Oh, great. There, there's a couple of easy ways. One of them is to just do a simple search. For ICC and then BASCAP, B-A-S-C-A-P, uh, most, of, most of those searches will land you directly on the main ICC BASCAP page. And then, then uh, your listeners can also just go to the main ICC World Business Organization website at www.iccwbo.org forward slash global dash issues dash issues dash trends. Um, that will get you to the main ICC website, and then just look for counterfeiting and piracy on the menu. That will take you back to the main uh, BASCAP page. Uh, there you'll find, your listeners would find a lot of information, a lot of really valuable free information on public awareness campaigns, supply chain security, counterfeiting in e-commerce, global engagement efforts, 
And one of the components I really enjoy is a very nice collection of free reports and publications related to product counterfeiting and piracy. Fascinating information, Michael. Thank you once again for joining us today on the IP Fridays podcast. Thank you. It's been my pleasure. That's it for this episode. If you liked what you heard, please show us your love by visiting ipfridays.com slash love and tweet a link to this show. We would be so grateful if you would do that. It would help us out to get the word out. Also, please subscribe to our podcast at ipfridays.com or on iTunes or Stitcher.com. If you have a question or want to be featured in one of the upcoming episodes, please send us your feedback at ipfridays.com slash feedback. Also, please leave us a review on iTunes. You can go to ipfridays.com slash iTunes and it will take you right to the correct page on iTunes. If you want to get mentioned on this podcast or even have comments within the next episode, please leave us your voicemail at ipfridays.com slash voicemail. You have been listening to an episode of IP Fridays. The views expressed by the participants of this program are their own and do not represent the views of nor are they endorsed by their respective law firms. None of the content should be considered legal advice. The IP Fridays podcast should not be construed as legal advice or legal opinion on any specific facts or circumstances. The contents of this podcast are intended for general informational purposes only, and you are urged to consult your own lawyer on any specific legal questions. As always, consult a lawyer or patent or trademark attorney. Copyright 2014. All rights reserved.